Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the TBS Tiny Whoop Nano Micro Brushed Quadcopter. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and test it both indoors and outdoors. The Tiny Whoop Nano is available in both ready to fly and buy and fly versions and the difference between the BNF version which is the one I have and the ready to fly version is that the ready to fly version is bundled with a basic pair of FEB goggles and a simple FRSky compatible radio transmitter. Inside this small box, along with the quadcopter, you can find a spare set of TBS 30mm brush propellers, a spare canopy, a 260mAh LHV 1S battery, and a basic battery charger. In terms of components, the Tiny Whoop Nano is using 0615 17,000 kV brushed motors, 30mm four bladed propellers, a PH 2.0 battery connector, under the canopy, you can find the TBS Unify Nano and TinyCam combo. The camera features a 700 TV line CMOS sensor and it's connected to the TBS Unify Nano VTX, which supports 48 channels, features smart audio using the TBS smart audio protocol, of course, and has a selectable output range of 25 and 50 milliwatts. The VTX is using a UFL antenna connector and it's connected to this antenna, which is located on the back of the quadcopter. An AfroSky D16 compatible receiver is built into the flight controller and in order to enter binding mode you will have to power up the quadcopter while pressing the bind button which is located over here. On the center of the quadcopter you can find a brushed flight controller and its unique feature is that it supports turtle mode so it can change the direction of the brushed motors. In addition it's not using beta flight firmware and shortly I'm going to show you how to configure this quadcopter using the TBS Agent X software. In terms of dimensions, the wheelbase of the Tiny Whoop Nano is 52.4 mm. The distance between the right motors and the left ones is 37.8 mm. And the distance between the back motors and the front ones is 36.5 mm. In addition, the Tiny Whoop Nano is very light and weighs only 18 grams without the battery and 24.6 grams, including the included 260 mAh 1S LHV battery. Configuring the Whoop Nano is done using the TBS Agent X app, and I admit that when I first got it, I tried to configure it using Betaflight, but of course it didn't recognize it. So all you have to do is to download and install the TBS Agent X app, which is available both for Mac and PC, then start the app and connect the Tiny Whoop Nano to your computer using a micro USB to USB cable. As you can see, now the Tiny Whoop Nano was recognized and we can hit manage in order to configure it. Over here, you can download firmware updates and the current version is 1.17. In case a new version is going to be released, you're going to see here an update icon and then you'll be able to update the firmware of the Tiny Whoop Nano. The second tab will enable you to configure the quadcopter. So first of all, under tuning, you can configure the rates, expo and the PIDs. And I recommend to leave these values the way they are. Next, you can configure the drone setup. And the most important thing for you is to configure the channels. So you have to make sure that you are using the correct channels. And what I recommend to do is to monitor your channels. So for example, this is the role which is assigned to channel one. And you can see the role is assigned to channel one. The pitch is assigned to channel two. So you can see the pitch here is channel two and etc. The arming needs to be set to a two position switch, the flight mode to a three position switch, the flip over to a two position switch, and this is going to enable the turtle mode, and the VTX needs to be set to a six position switch if you want to quickly change the frequency of the VTX. Next, you can control the values of the throttle, and again, I recommend to leave these values the way they are. Under interface, you can change the protocol of the receiver, and if you're just using the built-in FRSky receiver, you don't have to touch these values. Under advanced, you can tweak more advanced settings, and I recommend to refer to the user manual if you want to learn more about these features. Finally, under VTX, you can set the frequency of the VTX, so now it's set to 5740. The power can be set to either 25 and 200 milliwatts, 25 is 25 milliwatts, and 200 milliwatts is actually 50 milliwatts. You can also turn it on and off pit mode, and it can also set the control mode. It can be set either to off, range, so it's going to use the auxiliary channel that you previously configured under 
tuning and you can also set it to stick and again I recommend to refer to the user manual and it explains how to set the VTX channel using the sticks of your remote controller. Finally, after you finished configuring the quadcopter, head over to device and hit save. Now after configuring the quadcopter, over here I've got the flight mode selection switch. When it's set all the way to the top, it's on angle mode. On the center, it's going to be set to horizon mode. And when it's set to the bottom, it's going to be set to acro mode. Over here, I've got the arming switch. So you can see now the quadcopter is armed and now disarmed. And over here, I've got the turtle mode stick. So you can see now the quadcopter is upside down. And if you want to enable the turtle mode, you will need to arm the quadcopter. And then you can simply use the sticks in order to flip the quadcopter. And you can see that it doesn't happen immediately. You will have to play around with it. So now I managed to flip the quadcopter and just be careful not to burn your motors. So if your quadcopter refuses to flip itself, just go over and retrieve it. The next thing I've done is to test the Tiny Whoop Nano both indoors and outdoors. And I also tried it with different type of batteries. And the one I think that it performed the best with is the included TBS Graphene 260 mAh 1S LHP battery. And I recommend to get more of these batteries and also to get this type of battery charger that will enable you to charge multiple batteries simultaneously. In addition, I recommend to stick to angle mode when flying this quadcopter, especially if you're a beginner, because I found that it's a little bit hard to control it on acro mode. And anyway, I think that the most appealing feature of this quadcopter is to fly it around the house and also around people, and you're not going to get too crazy because this is not a very fast quadcopter, but still, it's fun to fly and will teach you the basic principles of flying FPV. In addition, the range of both receiver and VTX was great. The quality of the FPV camera is good, especially considering its size. And one of the things that I appreciate the most is that the propellers fit the motor shaft very well and none of the propellers flew away during a flight, which is a pretty common issue with these tiny quadcopters. The downsides of this quadcopter, however, are first of all, it doesn't have an on-screen display, so you won't be able to monitor the voltage of your battery. And I think that this is something that TBS should add to this quadcopter because otherwise you just fly it around until you are just losing power and you're going to pretty much destroy your battery in this way. And having an OSD is a very good feature to have. Second of all, I found that this frame is a little bit fragile and I already broke this part over here which is probably the most fragile part of the quadcopter. So I think that it could have been better to have a little bit more robust frame, even at the cost of adding a gram or two to this frame. Now I'm going to show you the flight footage. I hope you will enjoy it. And as always, if you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.